I'm in West Yellowstone, Montana. This is my first ever video filmed in Montana. And uh, this is one of the tourist towns that sprung up around Yellowstone National Park. Uh, I've got a lot of old school uh, tourist shops and all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna go check this out. Before I look around town, the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the Yellowstone Historic Center Museum. There's a giant grizzly bear statue protecting her cubs out front. They have fiberglass bisons, just like the Indiana Bicentennial bisons. This one's pretty neat. Now for most of the year, this place is covered in snow. I've been here in winter. The whole town is pretty much shut down except for a few hotels and restaurants. And uh, this is one of the really old snow plows. And they have one of the famous Yellowstone yellow buses. There's a bunch of old stagecoaches on the porch. The Union Pacific Depot, which was completed in 1909, is one of the oldest structures in West Yellowstone. It's a pretty grand place, especially for the time and how isolated this location was. The station is very spacious and it even had electric heating. There's the original ticket counter. It used to be very difficult to get to Yellowstone when it was first established as a national park in 1872. Only the very wealthy and willing could get out here. Transportation by wagon took forever. Union Pacific Railroad President E.H. Harriman visited Yellowstone in 1905, and he met with some officials from the Northern Pacific Railroad about constructing a primarily tourist railroad to facilitate tourism at Yellowstone National Park, and they could assume that it would bring in more people who otherwise wouldn't come out here. In June 1908, the first passenger train arrived here on the Oregon Short Line at the wooden depot that was on the site, and then the stone depot was built the year after that. Those who arrived here would be whisked away by stagecoaches into the park. That's a 1915 Ford Model T touring car. Cars did pretty quickly replace the railroad, and before Yellowstone got overcrowded by the 60s, bears and other wildlife would regularly walk right up to the car. This is a freight wagon. The caravans would usually have one of these wagons following with all the visitors' belongings. That's an original shoe shining chair some old Yellowstone memorabilia. And that is the skull of old Snaggletooth the Grizzly Bear. You can see the deformed tooth that was attached to his lower jaw by a flap of skin, which got him the name. It was probably the result of a fight with another bear. And this is the taxidermied body of old Snaggletooth. He was well known for frequenting the West Yellowstone dump for over a decade, and he was the most famous bear of Yellowstone in the 60s. Sadly, in May 1970, two poachers killed him, and those guys forfeited their measly $200 fine for murdering a legend. And this poor grizzly cub was killed by a car on the highway in West Yellowstone. I think we're the real monsters. In 1959, a series of massive earthquakes hit the Yellowstone area, and it caused a massive landslide at a nearby lake that killed a bunch of campers. There's an antique gun collection. This is a Center, an eight passenger coach that was used by early travelers in Yellowstone. Usually a visitor would take five days on the Grand Loop, stopping at Old Faithful, Yellowstone Lake, the Grand Canyon, and Mammoth Hot Springs. There was considerable train travel here well into the 1920s and 1930s, with up to 400 passengers arriving here daily. That's an original driver's hat. There's another painted bison. Finally, there's a fly fishing display. That's been a popular thing to do around here. And this is the backside of the railroad depot where Thousands of tourists in the early years arrived. So this is the Montana Centennial train. 
that was made to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Montana becoming an official territory. And it traveled all around, even went to New York City in 1964. This is a Union Pacific Railroad Monument. Uh, this is over 100 years old. I know uh, like the shields are like 1904, 1905. And it's mainly to commemorate how important the railroad was to the local economy here and how important it was to building this town and promoting Yellowstone tourism. I'm assuming that's a historic ranger station. Yeah, I found a little geyser coming out of the ground here. There is the Yellowstone IMAX theater. I love this. There's a statue of a grizzly bear in the middle of the street there. Yeah, look at this guy. Kind of looks like old Snaggletooth. wonder if this is a tribute to the murdered bear. This is the road that leads to Yellowstone National Park, which is a short ways down that road. And here you can see the old tourist uh, strip, all the old fashioned uh, trading companies, stores, hotels. Eagles is a really cool old general store and gas station. Really like the exterior of the Montana outpost there. It looks like a frontier fort, kind of. Smith and Chandler Mercantile. Oh yeah, look at all this taxidermy in this indoor walkway. Wood carved moose. That is the historic Madison Hotel. The Madison Hotel was built in 1912. Jess Pierman received a special use permit by the Forest Service to build a hotel on the site, but before he built this building it was just a big tent. It is still a very rustic hotel, with lots of taxidermy in the lobby. The fireplace here used to cater to the rail and stage travelers a hundred years ago. Upstairs there were originally 6 rooms, then 14 more got added. The place is still very old fashioned. The rooms haven't changed that much at all, I don't know if they have electricity, and none of the rooms have bathrooms. President Warren G. Harding stayed here in 1923 on his big western trip of doom. Now on the balcony of the Madison Hotel overlooking U.S. Highway 20, the longest road still in commission in America. Here's an owl, and look at that beautiful neon sign. Cafe Timberline, I think. Here's another painted bison, and this is the Three Bear Lodge, one of the historic hotels. And I found a little hidden secret inside of the Holiday Inn and the Branch restaurants. This is an original 1903 Oregon Short Line train car, built by the Pullman Company. This was the executive rail car of the vice president of Union Pacific, who claimed he had quote, bested old E.H. Harriman on this one, referring to their ridiculously expensive executive cars. This car cost $16,685 to build at the time.
When the car was retired from Union Pacific, it served as a summer home here in West Yellowstone. Then it was restored in 1995 and moved inside here for everyone to see. It is beautifully restored and it's really interesting to see how the wealthy rode the rails back then. I really like the old clay mill theater here. It's the Ho Hum Motel. Yes, I haven't seen one of these guys in a while, but I found Zoltar. Doors for the hearing. Come let Zoltar tell you more. closer and listen to what Zoltar has to tell you. Dream as if you live forever. Live as if you die today. That's right. You must live your days as if they were your last. Because one day they will be. You know what I mean. So go on, have fun, and surrender more cash for more wisdom from the great Zoltar. So that was West Yellowstone, Montana. Really neat tourist town. If you like this video, I have a bunch of other videos at Yellowstone National Park, as well as all sorts of old tourist towns, roadside attractions, all sorts of stuff. So please go check out my other videos, and thanks for watching.